bless you. Thank you, Sister. Praise God. We won't be long for sure. Sister Margaret has said a whole lot in regarding the plowing of planters, plowing before the planters. But we're excited to report victory in Rosedale. Praise God. And it's, it's, a, it's a privilege every time you get to see a new soul come into the house of the Lord. For the first time, we know nothing about the Lord. But start coming to church and get clean up, get the Holy Ghost baptized and, and start living for the There's nothing so refreshing as seeing a soul being birthed into the kingdom. So uh, with that said, um, and Sister Margaret mentioned a whole lot earlier, um, in regards to our starting in Rosedale, we tried to do an historical um, background check. And, you know, we did so many things in terms of the facts. We gather the facts. We gather by population, um, find out the different denominations that were in the area. Um, in one of the... One, one thing that stuck with me was um, we, in our investigation, one of the things we found out was that the corner stores that were in Rosedale was not just actually selling just, you know, just the, the little goodies. They were actually dealing drugs, and that was an eye-opener to us. So children that were in the area would go for candy would no doubt be exposed to you-know-what. And, and so with that in mind, we, 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 with all this information in mind, we began to pray specifically in these areas, and um, begin to tear down strongholds, and we did our prayer walk on Monday nights. We pray consistently, and and we're seeing a whole lot. Even Sister Brown was saying to me the other day that you know what, I used to see these young men passing with their pants to their knees. I don't see them anymore since we've started in Rosedale. Praise God! And we say that's victory in the name of Jesus. And so, as we begin to pray, and and and, and we're seeking God with the knowledge that we have gathered through the research that we have done, it, it makes a whole lot of difference. Because then you know exactly how to pray, what you're praying about, and you keep hitting the nail on the head until it disappears. Praise God. And so that's what we've been doing um, close to a year now. And uh, we're seeing exceptionally great results. And, you know, and, and on, on a weekly basis, you can see 80 people coming out, you know, 85. And, and the greatest turnout we have was, of course, a watch night. Surprise myself. I thought we have over 150 people that came out um, in Rosedale for a watch night service. <laughs> Praise God. And, and out of that, some people started coming back already. Families have, have, have been coming back since that watch night service. So we have seen young men walking up the streets, just walking up the street. We're having prayer meeting. He comes to the altar. We pray with him in a prayer meeting. He got the Holy Ghost. We baptize him shortly after that. And he's living for the Lord. And so we're excited to see what God is really doing. And saints of God, when we pray with the knowledge that we have gathered, and when we know about our areas, I believe it makes a world of difference. And we are seeing real, true results. We're excited in Rosedale, and I believe the people, the workers, we have some great workers in Rosedale, and, and that makes a big difference also. And we, are, we just want to continue in this vein. And we are looking for a great uh, year this year. We are going to reap the harvest continually. So as I said earlier, we did our own work. As Sister Banks, they came in, and it was a blessing to have them coming in. Uh, and Sister Flo Shaw, and they came in for a few for the weekend, I think it was two or three days, that were praying, and, and we did a great prayer walk. We walked through the neighborhood and, and just began to claim the territory for the Lord. And, and, and we're seeing results. Even up to this point, people are still coming out to the house of the Lord. On a weekly basis, we are getting visitors every week. In the beginning, you know, you know, as a new church starting, sometimes you worry about going to church and wonder who you're going to see. And it's been a worry for a little while. But now we're comfortable. I feel comfortable myself going to church. You don't, you're not saying who might be there, but people will always be coming out and there's a new soul coming into the house of the Lord. So for us, that's great encouragement. Pray for us. We're praying for those who have started and those who are on the journey. And we're believing that God is going to do greater things. God bless you. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We're happy about what God is doing in Rosedale. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Amen. I mean, I do draft in, in my field, and when Sister Banks um, spoke to us last year in the last prayer conference in OREC, we were made aware of the, uh, of the empire spirit that's over our city and that's trying to hinder a growth and revival uh, that the apostolics are trying to accomplish in this area, that it's a stronghold, it's a strong spirit that we must investigate in order to uh, know how to attack it. And so uh, we weren't able to have Sister Banks and Sister Flo Shaw come to our church, but because of that prayer conference, uh, we had uh, several of our saints 
um, including Sister Noel, who is now our prayer director of our church, uh, go online and started to, to punch in the zip code of our area. Our area, uh, we're in Brownsville. I don't consider that we are uh, a church in Brooklyn as much as we are a church in Brooklyn, but there's so much more to accomplish in our neighborhood before we even say Brooklyn. We are all, our area, our neighborhood is called Brownsville. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's 2.19 square miles, and it has around 78,000 people in just about two miles. Uh, it's very uh, populated. And um, so uh, Sister Noel, Christine Noel, plugged in into, the zip, into her computer uh, zip code right after the prayer conference before we had church the next morning. And she was able to tell us that there was a very strong presence of uh, sexual predators uh, in our area that within a block from the church, we had seven, just within a block, seven sexual predators that was lurking around our neighborhood. Uh, that was something that was very strong. Also, um, it kind of linked to our, we also knew that um, since uh, I've been to this area and I was sent to this area and I, I felt led of the Lord to, to go there, and we were pastoring there for about three and a half years now, that um, right next door to the church, not down the street, not uh, and there's no space but in our building, the next door over from my office, is a prostitution ring. And so it connected with the sexual predators and the cops know about it and they won't do anything about it. And um, so we knew what we were up against. We also know that because of the high population that's on, in our area of 78,000 people in a demographic, that we studied demographics, we know what percentage were black or African Americans, uh, which was 76%, 17% Hispanic, Latino, uh, whites were only 1%. And uh, it went on and on, not to, not to, uh, and the, the medium income, uh, in uh, median income in our area is only 15,000, uh, uh, 15,000 per year, which means that our area is very poor. And uh, when we have so many people in one area, with the income median being so low, it only leads to more violence and drugs. So we keep these things in mind when we did our research and we started to also study, realize that our area um, is uh, infestated with, with uh, public housing developments. Housing Authority, New York City Housing Authority uh, floods that entire area, multiple high-rise building, most saturated high-rise building in one area of New York City. Our area, Brownsville, is the highest saturated area of housing developments, which leads to more gangs. We also know that in as early as 1910, that the area had acquired a reputation as a vicious slum breeding and a breeding ground for crime. Uh, just to cut it short, it was the birthplace of Murder, Inc. When we began to study even further, we understand that many social problems are associated with the poverty and the crime and uh, due to drug addiction have played, and has played the area for uh, many decades. And of course, it, 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 this wouldn't be news to us that it has a significantly high rate of dropouts. Uh, so we have a lot of young people just roaming the streets that are not going to school. And uh, when we also study, we realized that there were many rappers, many hip hop artists that came out of that one area in Brownsville. So we are a church that has come to an area that we already know what we're up against. So with this information in mind, we began after the prayer conference, after we did our research, after we found all these things out, this was not going to be a deterrent for the church. This was gonna be an opportunity for the church. When we do spiritual mapping, it becomes very scary when you begin to not just have church ignorantly, but you begin to be informed about having church. It's kind of scary, but it also gives us a path to go. And so what we did was we started to realize that the churches that were effective in our area, whether they're apostolics or not, and they were mostly non-apostolic churches, they had feeding programs at their church. When we did evangelism, we realized that the number one question that came up was, does your church have a feeding program? And we weren't very much, I, me personally, I don't know about uh, a lot of people, but I know me, I was not accustomed to feeding people. And um, so we had to learn about how to feed people. And in this year, we were able to feed 1,338 hungry people. This year alone, by the Open Door Apostolic Tabernacle, with just a few people. We started a ministry called the Community Care Ministry. And we started to take care of the community. We started to be a community-focused people based upon Isaiah chapter 58. 
And so because of that feeding program, we saw people starting to line up in our churches. People had visions about people lining up outside, coming into church. They weren't coming in for the Holy Ghost. They were coming in for, coming in for food. But when they came for food, we saw people get the Holy Ghost at our altars. We saw deacons come to the altar and pray. We saw people who were, 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 were uh, un, uh, had drug addiction problems get delivered at the altar, got the Holy Ghost, got baptized. We saw healing. We saw deliverance take place. Why? Because we started to do things in a strategic way because we did spiritual mapping. We went to the four corners of Brownsville. We had four teams of prayer people go to the four corners of Brownsville. And we had olive oil in our hands. We prayed over it at church. And then we dispatched over the four corners. That based upon our spiritual map and information, it gave us the corners of Brownsville. We went to the four corners of Brownsville. And we poured out the entire bottle of oil on the sidewalk. And we began to pray the Holy Ghost down against. And we started to, to lay claims on our area. We said, this box, this circle is our circle. This territory is our territory. We began to bind, bind the, strong, the strong man of Brownsville. We started coming against the spirit of perversion. We started coming against all kinds of spirit. And I tell you what, this year, the prostitution rink is dormant. No activities. We got frustrated. After one time when we had a visiting minister come to visit our church, went to get his car, came and pulled up at our church, and a prostitute walked in his car and locked the door thinking that he was there to do business with her and we said enough is enough and we pray them out and they're gone the building is still there every now and again we see people coming in but we don't see any business going on it's shut down and we thank god for victory somebody say victory we started to pray every month the th first three consecutive Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, we've been praying at church, having consecration. We're praying against the strong men. We're coming against the strongholds of our community because we know that prayer is going to work. We start to have winner soul campaigns. We start to see people coming off the streets because until then, we weren't winning anybody in Brownsville. We did a survey in our church to find out how many people got the Holy Ghost from within our area. People are coming from New Jersey to church. People are coming from Queens to church. They were coming from Staten Island, New Jersey to church. And nobody was getting saved in Brownsville. But this year, we saw people get the Holy Ghost. And we saw people coming in from Brownsville. i give you a quick report about how many people got saved. This year we were privileged to see 259 first-time visitors walk through the doors of the Open Door Apostolic Tabernacle because of spiritual mapping. That's an increase of 100 people from the year before where we didn't do spiritual mapping. This year we saw 32 souls, 32 souls for us. That's big. 32 souls will see the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's an increase of 11 souls that received the Holy Ghost because of spiritual mapping. 28 people were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. An increase of 13 souls because of spiritual mapping. And eight people were reclaimed, an increase of three from last year. We saw a, third, a total of 13 new members given right hand of fellowship. That means they went through 13 weeks of discipleship course. They know now about holiness, about tithing, about giving, about living for God. These were people who didn't know the Lord before. 13 people are now members of our church because of spiritual mapping. And so this year... We decided that we're going to focus on the family. This year is going to be our theme. We're going to focus on broken homes. We're going to focus on single moms. We're going to focus on young teenagers that are out there. We're going to focus on the homes. We're going to go to people and we're going to evangelize from the, from the standpoint that we want to come into your home and help you fix the problems that are in your home. That Jesus Christ can bring families back together again. Because when we have strong families, we will have stronger church. And so I encourage you, and I thank Sister Banks and the team for introducing us to this, because all up to this point, we were just having church. 
We were just hitting and missing. But now we know exactly what we're about. We know exactly who our enemy is. And we know exactly how to defeat him. I encourage you to do spiritual mapping. Not only in your church, but in your personal lives. I wonder what would happen if our entire district do a spiritual mapping up in our district. In our district. In New York Metro. And everybody knew what we were up against. And everybody prayed specifically. We would see specific results. Last year our theme was grow. And we saw growth. This year our theme is focus on the family and we're going to see marriages come back together. We're going to see families come back together. We're going to have revival in our homes and we're going to have revival in our churches. Somebody stand and give God praise. Before the planners and I said, Lord, I'm going to write them a letter. And I said, I'm going to ask them if they will come to Newark because I've heard some of the work that they've done because I've done some research. And before I can even send out the email, I got a call, and they said, are you Brother Warren White? And I'm like, yeah, I don't owe nobody no money, so I don't know how they get my cell phone. And I'm on the side of the, riding down the highway, and they said, this is Sister Margaret Banks. And I pulled over to the side, and I said, Lord, what's going on? She said, I got your number from somebody from somebody, and they told me to call you because you wanted plowing before the planners to come to Newark. And I said, yes, ma'am. We had about an hour and a half conversation. I was broken on the side of the road because God would hear a prayer and be able to answer it through someone else to get in touch with her, to find my phone number. I thought it was someone else that had given it, but it was just God moving in the midst of it. So when I talked to Sister Banks, she told me about a couple of books. I got her book. I read it in two days. And then she told me about taking... Your City for God, I read that book. Then she sent me a paper about spiritual mapping. And I said, oh, God, this is a lot of research. So by the time I got finished, I sent her back about 25 pages. And she sent it back and said, can you shorten it down a little bit? And I'm excited because I'm like, I grew up in the city of Newark. But I didn't grow up in a religious house. I didn't grow up as a Christian I've only been saved for the last 10 years. But what I found out about the city of Newark blew my mind. The city Newark, it was even called Newark because they wanted to be a new work for Christians. The Puritans had founded it. And I found out so much. The riots of 1967 in Newark had damaged the city so much that it still has not recovered till this day. It is plagued by gangs. It is plagued by violence. It is plagued by people with low self-esteem. The economy of the city, it left where it was once a thriving metropolis. Now it has sunk down into the barrels where people look at Newark and they only equate it to being the carjacking city capital of the world. And now it's the gang capital. And now it's the murder capital. So where the church is seated, God's hand has been on this church. Before we even decided to really establish, we went looking. The church had, we asked to rent a space. They put us in a basement, and we had about four chairs and a bunch of other chairs stacked up, and the toilet was so small that a kid could even use it. And this is what we were trying to make a church in. And then they told us, the people that we were renting from, that we have to move you out of here. And across the street, they had a chapel. And we said we couldn't afford it, and We wish we could have had that because it looked more like a church. I had brought some pictures, but I didn't give them to the booth to be able to see. So I'm going to explain for a minute. We went from a little room, and they moved us across the street. And we were having church. We would go out and compel them to come in and tell them about Jesus. And I mean, you could smell the alcohol on their breath. But they would hear about Jesus and they would be falling on the floor and they would be rolling around and doing all the things wanting to get deliverance. And we moved in the building and it was cold. We would go in there sometime and it would be ice cold, no heat inside of this building. There would be no lights on. We still was going to have church because we had to establish a foothold for Jesus in the community. So regardless of what the devil was trying to do, we were establishing a place where people can come and know that Jesus was in the place. So they told us again in this building we moved over that we had to move because the floor was sinking and the boiler broke down. They gutted the entire building. And they turned around and they put brand new carpet, 
a new boiler, new lighting. It's a brand new church. It was cold in the church last month. I told them, I said, it's cold in here. We tried to turn the heat up. They put a blower in there. It didn't work. So they ran a new duct system. It's a brand new church. And we paid not a dime. We paid not a dime. If you've seen what it looked like before, what it looks like now, it is nothing but the blessings of God because he wants to establish church in this area. When we started to do the spiritual mapping, I said, I don't want to go way out of Newark. I want to be a community church and build it right there. So I'm like, Lord, what do you do? Everybody has a method, but what is your plan for this city? You have allowed me to see that there is a prince demon that is in this area, but how do we come against it? And he said, my love is what's going to turn them because they've known religiosity. They've been assembled inside of a church, but they don't know the love of God, and they don't know the love of the church, and the local church is the hope for the world. Just get out there and love the community. So we're walking around, and I walk around the church before I go in and say, Lord, help us win the souls. Help them to know that you are here for them, that they can know you and that you want to know them, that they are your most prized possession. And one day we had a service and it was a guy coming by and he said, I've been coming by this church and I said I was going to come in. He was homeless. He was broken down and he came in and we thought somebody had brought him and afterwards he said I'm tired of living the way I'm living but something about this church has told me to come in and he came and he said I just want a Bible and he said I'm hungry. I said alright we ain't going to give you no money but I'll go buy you something to eat. So I went and bought him something to eat. The man's been coming. He's been faithful. He hasn't asked the church for no money. We said, Lord, what are we going to do in this, this community? It's heavily Catholicism. They just tore down four buildings, and they built a mosque within the city. There were 10,000 people in the surrounding three-block area that we could reach. So the Lord has me thinking outside the box. One day we had a healing service, and I said, all right, let's get some balloons. And I asked everybody that came that whatever it is that you need a healing from, write it on a balloon and we're going to step outside and we're going to release it and we're going to let it go up to God. We decided that we wanted to be able to go out and touch the community, let them know that we're here. So we made up some door hangers, all from spiritual mapping, knowing what the heart of the city is and being able to meet that need. Because if we can't meet the need of the people, then we're never going to be able to reach them. So we made up some door tracks. And they said, please forgive us if we have ever offended you in any way, the church. And they came, one person, and I almost wanted to run out the church and run around, and I said, that's 100%. <laughs> and I had a testimony service that day and said, anybody want to testify? And Kimberly Williams, she had called the church line and had questioned me like she was interviewing me for a job. Wanted to know that I believe in the gifts of the spirit that I teach the Bible way. I said, absolutely. Absolutely. She said, well, I think that's a church that I want to be in. I said, well, come and see what the Lord does in your life. She came. She testified and said, this track saved my life. This track saved my life. If a church is going to ask me to forgive them without even knowing me, that's a church I want to go to. Spiritual mapping allowed us to see that we have five different wards in New Jersey, 55,000 people. We have over 10,000 churches, yet we have a huge crime rate. Within a three-block area, most of you may know because it hit the national news, the lawyer that I got shot because they wanted to take the car. They wanted this car because it was worth $10,000 on the black market. That's what a human life was worth. But those men that took that car is within our three block radius around the corner. We go around there and we evangelize and we know that drugs is grabbing hold of the city. But through spiritual mapping, we are understanding what it is and we're going after it. We're going after it in the deep bottoms of prayer and not going out and confronting it, but going in prayer and saying, God, show us how we can reach these people. We go around, they drop their drugs, but they still sell them. But I'm saying, I'm looking for one of them to come into the house of God to change it around. <laughs> Through spiritual mapping, we're able to know what the heartbeat of the city is. 
coming down here. I'm driving alone, and I'm like, Lord, I'm way out of my element. I'm way out of my element. I sat here today, and during the prayer conference, I had never had anything happen like this before. But I'm closing my eyes, and I'm seeing the people that I walk by as I walk around the city. And God said, there they are right there. They just need you to reach out to them. He lets me see their faces, and I have never had that experience before. But because of this conference today, and I heard the voice of God, and Sister Margaret said, come. I didn't know what to expect. But through spiritual mapping, I believe by the Holy Ghost that dwells inside me that it is not his will that any shall perish, but that all shall come to repentance. And through spiritual mapping, I'm understanding that we're like cell phone towers. I can be in New Jersey, but New York Metro, if I could connect and New Jersey could connect with them, then we have a cell phone tower that the prayer will always be up and it will place a shield around our cities. And that together we can build and together we can set the captives free. And we can establish God's kingdom here on earth that the hurting souls, they're wounded. They just need to know the love of Christ. They just need to know that the church of the living God loves them not just in word but in deed. So what we're doing through spiritual mapping is we're building a foundation. I don't want them to run. I don't want them to shout. I want them to know Jesus and him crucified. I want them to know that the gospel message is the saving message. Not the prosperity message. But God can break you out of this bondage. That God want to move you on the level of poverty up to a spiritual level of maturity and understanding of him and him alone. That they can be free to be all that God created them to be and not be bound we don't need no politicians. We just need the church to be the church. And through spiritual mapping, we're going to be able to do that. I'm excited about the team coming. I'm excited. I know it's going to be a breakthrough. We got four people in the church, but we got a big church. And God is just allowing us to see what he's going to do. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this time.